is Britain who actually made Ukraine to give up nuclear weapon. If you would have have a nuclear weapon, we would have the biggest ammunition in so everything. All nuclear weapon was actually based in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. You and American, you signed Bud- Budapest Agreement and mm-hmm. took our nuclear weapon Good when point. we were weak economically. Yeah. When we are, we generally were starving the Soviet Union collapse. You mm-hmm. use this opportunity. You took everything from us. And you sign the agreement that you will protect our land. It's first point. Include Russian. It's yeah. first point. Yeah. Second point regarding, we're obviously very grateful that Britain helped. It's, British people are extremely uh, patriotic and we Ukraine grateful enormously. However, if you will compare British contribution to Ukrainian war, you gender, you're definitely not in front of line. Your contribution only 0.3 of GDP your international aim are bigger than contribution to Ukrainian war. And let's not say that it will affect your economy and you are starving and you will not survive. I really think it's, it's nasty what you say. It's not nasty, Regret- it's just accurate, Olga. No, the, the, it's, it's not accurate. 0.3% will no, but, do, the, do nothing yeah, to Olga, your economy. Yeah, but Olga, Sorry. all I'm saying is, I'm not saying, that, I'm not saying that the UK should not support Ukraine. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we should stop speaking out of both sides of our mouth at the same time. If it is so important, if it is so existential for the future of Europe, then let's all tighten our belts, let's all increase taxes, let's all cut spending on our own public services to fund more armaments and put our economy on a war footing to support Ukraine. Ain't happening, Olga. It's not happening. No, no, sorry, you just contributing 0.3%. I understand that. It's not exactly game-changing contribution. And it's not exactly the contribution that will ruin British economy. Okay. Because I think it's unfair what you're saying. But then how much it's do you want, Olga? Well, no, okay, if so you what... will compare, for example, yeah. United States, they contributed nearly 100 billion. You yeah, it took, them ages to get, billion. Took, took them ages to give it, though. Yeah, but they contributed 100 billion. You contributed even 5 now, billion. Even now, uh, the... Uh, the um, uh, a finance minister of Ukraine is is talking about the fact that this is all being held up in the US. So they've committed the money, but it hasn't come through yet. It's taking too yeah, long. This is what's going on everywhere. And if you and and Americans sign the agreement to protect our land, mm-hmm. and there is you never. I'm not saying that you do, you trying, but you're not trying enough. Hi, Be- hi, Ali. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this, and I don't want you to take any offense. You're not a student of war. So you won't understand what war is, what the Ukrainians are doing, what you're doing, what you guys are doing now on the radio. You are also exposing certain things you shouldn't because you are looking at the first phase of the attack. Mm -hmm. To get to the second phase of the attack, what we are doing now is opening doors for Putin to realize that Ukraine has special forces helping them to analyze how to break through. Putin has always been on the offensive. Ukraine now has turned the tide. If you and every other media keep talking about this, you are exposing the next phase. Okay. Interesting, Ben. I think we should have this conversation again uh, in a few years' time when we see whether a peace agreement no, has no, been no, reached. No, 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 brother. Right now, as I'm talking to you, in the I next know. few days, yeah. in the next few days, I will be doing, I will be advising certain people in Ukraine. Okay. I want to tell you something. Be very careful. Right now, Putin is on the back foot. Okay. It's, not just, it's not just what he's on the back foot on. It's on the back foot that in Russia, if you know Russian politics, yeah. right now things are going on in Russia yeah. that is about to take him out. Well, I've, are, I've, heard, I've, heard that, I've heard that I've heard that for the last uh, 15 no, years. No, 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 no. no. Ben, right it now, never right comes now, to pass. Ben, thank you yeah, for your call. No, that, what you heard then yeah, was not what's happening okay. now. Okay, Ben, I, thank you for your call. I just want to squeeze in Harry, a first-time caller in Brighton. Harry, you've got 20 seconds. Go. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, it's not just actually about us on our own. It's about NATO as a whole. And our yep. contribution yep. to that spending needs to also be matched and aided by other countries within um, NATO. Throughout history, we've always been an exhibitionist army. We've never fought a war on our own. We've always aided it by more recently actually training the troops rather than just fighting ourselves. So actually, we're doing as much as we possibly can at the moment um, by fighting that war by proxy rather than with boots on the ground. So we do need to continue as much as we're doing. With Ukraine doing what they're doing going into Russia, I think it's quite volatile. I don't sort of know how I feel about that. However, it's putting the pressure on again on Russia. And I feel like it's also put the pressure on the rest of NATO to turn around and say, right, what more do we need to do? Right. First of all, red lines, an expression that should never be used. 
Red lines is cotton wool balls blown in the wind. It doesn't exist because everyone that's ever mentioned is broken. So forget about that. Everybody out there, forget about even listening to that nonsense. Now, when you talk about, you know, the, the lines and peace deal, we're not just talking about land here. What we're talking about is people and people's lives in the Donbass and Zaporizhia and those regions there, Herson. There's people's lives there, and those people under the Russian control at the moment, their lives are absolute sheer hell. They are being brutalised. I have watched this day in, day out, and I will not even on the telephone actually describe the things what the Russians are doing to the Ukrainian people. Even, or I will tell you one thing, one Ukrainian girl was serving a Russian um, soldier in a service station, and she spoke Ukrainian to him in her own country, in Ukraine. Do you know what he did? He put handcuffs on her, arrested her, took her away to a cellar. And the smirk on his face when he was talking to the propagandist on camera, well, you just think about what they did to that poor no, I can, I can so, understand. It's yeah, absolutely appalling. So speaking Ukrainian in Ukraine. It's appalling. And, Beryl, what do you think we should do? You, because, because you've made the point very clearly about the Budapest Memorandum. Yeah. What do you think we should do to support Ukraine? You're, you're comfortable with the incursion. Uh, attack is best form of defence, you're saying. 100%. Right, so what do you think we should be doing? Because clearly we're not doing enough. Right, what we should do, and this is the West, you know, in, in your bones, you need to change what you've got in there and you need to put some tungsten in there. Because we've been taken in by Putin because from day one, it's all been word games. From the very first day, they turned around and said, we're going to nuke you. We're going to nuke you. This has been their breakfast, lunch, dinner and supper to the West all the time. They're absolutely paranoid about Ukraine and about the West. It's absolutely ludicrous. I actually think they brainwash themselves, to be honest. I think they talk to themselves in mirrors and it comes back at them. <laughs> they've, they've actually, yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely madness. No, we support Ukraine through and through, and not just does the West. I mean, we were supported by the Americans in the Second World War. Right. So yeah. were Russia, but Russia forgets that on their lease. We actually pay the, the um, sorry, Americans back. You know, Russia never did. They paid a small amount back, and yet they helped the Russians after the Russians had actually invaded Poland yeah. because the Russians weren't involved in the Second World War on the Allies' side, our side. They were actually on Hitler's side. And they, yeah, and they have never paid back. They're still driving Western cars. I mean, when um, yeah. Putin went to um, North Korea, he was driving an American Merc. Well, but he hates us. He hates well, us in the West. Well, well, Beryl, I think it's really, it's a really deep and fascinating analysis that you provided, and I think you've got a very strong view. A lot of people would concur with it, and I thank you for it. Please do call again soon.